Hello, everyone. We're going to go ahead and get started talking about people of the sturgeon and for the love of sturgeon. So we're going to get the presentation set up. There we go. All right. So today we're talking about sturgeon, which is a fish that is very valuable here in the Lake Winnebago system. And uh, Sturgeon uh, have been around for thousands and thousands of years, and uh, they're sometimes called dinosaur fish because of their longevity. This is what one looks like. As you can see, they look a lot like a catfish, but they have a lot in common with sharks as well. And the reason for that is because their skin is not scaly, it is more of a soft, smooth kind of texture, but they're skin is very sharp on the edges as well. You can see where the ridges are and uh, they've been known to cut people with that. Um, but sturgeon can live up to a hundred years old. Um, they also can grow up to 160 pounds so they can be very large. Um, and so that would mean as a hundred year old fish they were around when the Harley Davidson brothers were skidding their uh, motorcycles together. So you can imagine all the things that these fish have seen. You can see this is a cute baby sturgeon. Now sturgeon only spawn every three to five years. Um, this is not as often as many other species of animals, but the reason for this is that they're very particular about um, when and where they spawn. So they always are looking for the best ideal conditions for water clarity and water um, temperatures and things like that are really important to them when they're spawning to make sure the survival of their offspring. Now here you can see the Lake Winnebago system. Fond du Lac's way in the bottom there, but you can kind of get the idea of um, how big of an area this is. And all the little lakes and rivers that tie together to the system are often the channels where these um, creatures go to spawn in the spring, particularly on the Wolf River. Now, of course, sturgeon were an important part of Native American culture here in the Fond du Lac area. Uh, the Menominee in particular used sturgeon almost like the Plains Indians used um, buffalo. It was a very important part of their culture. They would hunt year-round and they also used their skin for um, different tools and materials and they smoked the sturgeon. Now smoking sturgeon is the best way to preserve them for a long period of time and it gave them food throughout the year. However, they shared these innovations and their skills with um, early European settlers and they did not find the sturgeon as peeling. Now, of course, this time sturgeon were in the thousands and thousands and uh, new European settlers weren't that interested in using them as a foodstuff. They didn't know how to eat them. They thought they looked ugly and they had a really bad reputation, especially on the Great Lakes. Um, they were known for cutting into fishermen's nets and releasing all the fish, as well as um, rumor had it that they were eating up all the fish eggs. Now we know that's not true today, but they are bottom feeders, so that makes them a little bit more susceptible to that abuse. Now, can you guess what this is? This is caviar. Um, caviar is fish eggs and particularly sturgeon eggs. Um, during the turn of the 1800s into the 1900s, um, the new middle class was very big on trying to find those little luxuries that could help show their status, and caviar was one of those. Um, of course, by the time this happened, caviar was pretty much bunk in the UK and in the rest of Europe, particularly Russia. Um, at that time, a lot of the lake sturgeon in those areas had been wiped out completely. Um, so they were looking for new populations to exploit. So they had found the Lake Winnebago and the Great Lakes systems to be a great source of these fish. And thousands and thousands of them were harvested for caviar. Um, now this was often a local treat that people enjoyed, however, with the new refrigeration and shipping practices, they were often re-canned and sold as Russian caviar, 
if they were of a higher grade. So a lot of people try to make money off of them as well. Now, as you can see here in the early um, 1903 were the first regulations made on the sturgeon spearing season, because at that point, the population had been reduced significantly due to overfishing. Um, and as you can see here during the 1910s and early 1920s, um, when the population was trying to rebound and federal, federal and state governments pitched in to try to regulate the spearing of the fish, uh, it became almost like prohibition. As you can see in this photo here, these gentlemen are imbibing in some illegal booze as well as enjoying some illegal fishing. Um, so as you can see, people, especially here in Wisconsin in the Fond du Lac area, they really had a rough time dealing with these changes to their way of life and their traditions of sturgeon spearing. Now, as you can see here, during the 1940s and 50s, they started to research in population and conservation management became a big issue. Um, there was a lot of people that really wanted to make sure that these fish were around for generations to come. So they made a bigger effort to document their sizes, to um, create fisheries to allow them to repopulate a little faster. Like I mentioned before, they spawn every three to five years. So by artificially helping that process along, that helped to boost the population at a much faster rate. Um, there also was a lot of DNR input and in local fishermen's clubs that worked together to document the size, the age of a lot of these fish so they could uh, track the data over time to see how the population was growing and changing as the waters of the lakes were changing as well. Now, as you can see here, this is from Lake Winnebago in the 1940s, and you can see they've got Christmas trees out on the lake. Now the reason for that is having the lakes has cracks in the ice during the winter. Now to keep you and your vehicles from going in the ice, these Christmas trees guided the trails along the lake to get you where you need to go. Um, this tradition continues today and even to last, last year here in 2020, um, at the end of the Christmas season, people put their Christmas trees out in their ditches and they're picked up by the local fishermen's clubs and they're used to mark these spots out on the lake. Now Sturgeon for Tomorrow was an organization started in 1978 of a number of fishing clubs that worked together to document the progression of the resurgence of the Lake Sturgeon in the Lake Winnebago region. As you can see they're in all different sections of it. Um, but they all work together to um, promote the conservation of these fish and their preservation of their habitat. Now, what is sturgeon spearing like today? Well, as you can see here, going out on the lake is quite a fun event, and typically this takes place the second weekend in February. Um, most people use this opportunity to gather with family and friends. Um, however, it's important to make sure the ice is thick enough um, as the DNR puts out there for their regulations. They encourage people to wait till there's a foot of ice, if not more than that, to start going out on the lake with vehicles. Um, of course, you can go out when it's a little bit lighter, but you always have to be on the side of caution. You can see here that they're cutting out on the top left corner a chunk of ice and a square out of the lake. Now this is the only reason you can cut a hole this large in any lake in the state of Wisconsin. And the reason for that is because these fish get pretty big, um, as you can see in the next photo there. Now of course you have to mark your spot there. And so a lot of um, fishermen use shanties. Now shanties have been around since the Native Americans and the Menominee were fishing on Lake Winnebago. Um, however, they've drastically improved over time. Um, for the first ones were often just a blanket or a tarp propped up over you as you laid with your belly on the ice. Um, later on, farmers would use old chicken coops or old silo hatches that they would use to shove out on the ice to protect themselves from the weather. And today they're much more fancy. You can get some that they have a TV and a coffee maker in there, or you can have some that are very bright and colorful in their design. So they're definitely a unique way to stand out while you're out on the lake. Now, 
while you're sitting there fishing. Uh, it's a very long process. You have to have a lot of patience to be a sturgeon spearer. Um, oftentimes people go years without even seeing one. It all really depends on the year and what part of the lake the sturgeon are tending to be in. Sometimes they're on the north end, sometimes on the south end, or even in, they're hanging out in the river systems and staying away from the lakes. So it really depends on the year and the water quality. Um, this also is part of the experience is the patience and the waiting. And you can see there in the photo that you have a little sliver in the water and it's almost like watching a TV, looking for every little detail to see if you can catch a sturgeon. Now, once you see a sturgeon, you have to go through the work of spearing it. You can see here, we've got an example of a spearhead and you can see that they've got barbs on it. And so that allows it to stay inside the fish and not to slip away. Because of course, these are very big and strong fish. So you don't want to let them cut loose. You can also notice on both of these that there is a string attached to it. Now the reason for this is because these sturgeon are so big and they have a tendency to swim away <laughs> when they've been speared. Um, this allows the fishermen to hang on to the sturgeon for a little bit longer and make sure that they can get them out of their hole. And you can see in the photo there where they've speared a sturgeon that you can see where the handle has been detached from the actual spear head itself and the rope helps you to hang on to that. Now once you've speared a fish you would take it out to a DNR test DNR documenting station and your sturgeon would be tagged. You would be able to document its weight and its length and its age and its sex and so those kind of things are a really neat place to see and there's a number of different locations around Lake Winnebago, especially during sturgeon season where you can go and you can see the catches that people have made. Now, of course, sturgeon spearing is a big part of the culture here in Fond du Lac. Um, as you can see in the upper left hand photo, there is the 1957 sturgeon queen. Um, as you can see, it was kind of a prestigious position, but also a odd position. Um, part of her role would be going around on the lake and meeting with different spears and celebrating with them when they got their catch and uh, kissing some sturgeon. Now in the bottom right photo, we have a local business, Ferris Popcorn, um, and they help to celebrate during Sturgeon Spectacular as well as other local businesses by putting um, cutouts of sturgeon in their store windows. It's a big celebration here as well as um, a way for families to get together and hang out on the ice. Now there's also some lore that comes along with sturgeon spearing and we've got a story about um, the maid of the lake. Now the story with this is that there is a sturgeon spear out on Lake Winnebago and he had been staring at his hole for a long long time. <laughs> And he was getting a little tired. All of a sudden he saw a big white sturgeon. And this sturgeon, he grabbed his spear and he kept going, tried to keep throwing at it and he missed and he missed. And all of a sudden the sturgeon jumped up through the hole into his shanty. Of course this stunned him and when he opened his eyes again there was a beautiful girl standing there in the shanty with him. And she explained that she was the maid of the lake. Now, of course, he thought she was quite beautiful and fell in love instantly. And he tried to convince her to stay with him as she, after leaving the ice. And she said no, but she allowed him to give her a kiss and she jumped back in the lake and turned back into a sturgeon. So that is why they always say, if you do catch a sturgeon, make sure you kiss it because it might be the maid of the lake. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us for another online history lesson, and we look forward to seeing you next week.